friends, welcome to Law Chat with Gerja. This is your legal BFF, Gerja Bharga Patel. Thank you for tuning in. I am so grateful for every single one of you for tuning in and listening because this is what Law Chat is about. It's a place for you to be inspired, a place for you to gain some more wisdom and knowledge about your industry, but a place also where you can receive mentorship through storytelling. Thank you so much. Now, I know that before we walk into this next episode, whether you're tuning in through your iTunes or through other form of a podcast or whether this is on YouTube, I would love for you to share this information with someone else, somebody who is your friend, your family, a colleague, somebody in your community, someone who can really be inspired by this as well and benefit from the information and from the stories that we're sharing with you today. Law Chat is to help the community, is to boost the community, is to inspire the community. And I want you to help me to do that. So thank you so much for that. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome to Law Chat. Do you ever wonder how the short-term rental, AKA Airbnb industry works? How to make money and be that amazing super host, or even just a host that people want to come back to or get good reviews? Well, my guests today, Annette and Sarah, they're not just your average short-term enthusiast or your average Airbnb. They've been doing this for 10 years counting, and now they are educators on how to build your business and how to have that amazing Airbnb and actually have value for your customers, but then also that brings it back and returning customers as well. They have a business called Thanks for Visiting, where they bring their diverse knowledge to stagers and hosts to grow their business. It's a hospitality prep school for Airbnb hosts. I mean, so genius. I kind of, I love your business model. I think it is so cool. And they're teaching hundreds of people to run a profitable five-star Airbnb and not just how to grow, but to sustain it. So extra income, yes, please. But at the same time, all the business acumen that they're giving to their clients, their students, and also the way they're serving their own guests that come in. So welcome to Law Chat, Sarah and Annette. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. First of all, I was just admiring your entire setup, which is so cool, which I think, again, speaks volumes about how particular you are with (laughs) your own Airbnbs and your own business. And I know that when Airbnb came about, it probably was just like another business opportunity for some of those that could see that vision. But tell me, how did your story start? And where did you all meet also? Sure. Let's start with where we met. And then we'll backtrack from there. Sarah and I, and I think it's very appropriate for the show that we're on today. We met at a city council meeting. And I can be honest, it was the first and only city council meeting I've ever (laughs) attended, but it has been extremely fruitful. And so show up to those meetings when you are called. But it was a city council meeting here in Columbus, Ohio. That's where we are currently. And they were wanting to put some very tight rules and regulations specifically around the amount of nights that you could open your doors to short-term rental guests. And I'm just going to say this was predominantly, I think, brought on by the hotel lobbyist. And so because the host, all of us showing up, Sarah and myself included, we are completely there for any sort of rules, regulations, licensing, taxation. We have no problems with that. The problem that we had was the government wanting to tell us how to use our properties. So we met at that city council meeting, but this is where we'll backtrack the story because I was there to fight for my rights to short-term rent, but Sarah had, I'd say a lot more on the line because she had just moved to Columbus specifically for short-term rentals and real estate. So Sarah, why don't we backtrack onto you now? Yeah, sure. I don't know. We all had a lot on the line that's why we love what we do. The people who listen to our podcast and who are in our community, they're very passionate about what they do and they will um, do whatever it takes to keep their business thriving. But I was a performer in New York City, musical theater. So Mm -hmm. doing the whole Broadway tap dancing, singing thing. And I felt myself after about, I don't know, 12, 15 years of doing it that I was kind of burnt out and kind of over it and had accomplished all the things that I wanted to accomplish And I had read Rich Dad, Poor Dad per my husband's suggestion. And I fell in love with the thought of building wealth through real estate. I loved houses. I always have, whether it was decorating or organizing them, I love them. And so I thought this was a really cool way to marry 
my passion for interiors. And of course, as an actor, I had my fair share of time behind a bar serving people. So hospitality was at the core of everything that I was doing up to that point. And so we bought a home somehow in Astoria, Queens in New York City with an FHA loan, 3% down. And it was 2010, I think. And Airbnb was about two years old Mm -hmm. and really just in bigger markets. And my friend who's from Australia was using it and asked me to change the bed for him one day because he couldn't get back and change the bed for a guest who was coming. And I asked him all the questions. I made the bed beautifully. And I went back to my husband. I was like, you know what? We had this little bedroom downstairs with its own entrance. And I was like, instead of having my other actor friends rent this out from us, let's try this platform called Airbnb. And he thought I was crazy because it wasn't truly a duplex home. There was a door between that room and ensuite and the rest of the house, Mm -hmm. but we tried it. (laughs) And I mean, I think that first year we hosted people from 16 different countries. We never saw any of them because they're out, you know, getting to see the sites of New York city, but we cash flowed in New York City. So not only did that one room with the ensuite pay our mortgage, but we were making money to live in our own home. And that for me was really powerful. And I was like, I've got to do more of this. So four years went by, we made great money. We actually sold the house as an operating short-term rental. So I sold the furniture. I sold all the numbers and all the know-how. And I took those profits And we did a spreadsheet of where in the U.S. we should go to really stretch our dollar. And we thought about secondary markets like Denver and Portland and Seattle, but really they were just as expensive as Queens was. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have a better lifestyle too. We wanted to go on vacation more and be able to buy more property and have less red tape or so I thought. Weren't they like those states had more tenant friendly laws than owner friendly? Is that kind of the vibe that you're getting in some of the... We almost purchased a home in Portland by almost purchase. I mean, we put an offer in, it was Mm -hmm. accepted. And at that same exact time, there was a huge snowstorm in Portland. They're not used to snow there. So they had to call in like salt trucks from Seattle and all these other places. And I was getting my hair cut for some reason while we were there. We were there looking at the property. I don't know. I was talking to the salon girl (laughs) and she was telling me how she didn't have to pay rent that month. And I was like, why would you have to pay rent? She's like, well, I couldn't get to work. And I was like, well, right, but your landlord still has to pay his mortgage. So how does that work? And she was like, I don't know. And I was like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. (laughs) So we did not buy that property. And we found Columbus, Ohio as this place that's not landlocked by any other big cities. There's a lot of Fortune 500 companies here. The biggest university is here. It was checking every single box except for 300 days of sunshine. So we compromised, came here. And of course, they were imposing some regulations that actually had a really lovely outcome after we showed up and spoke our voice. And that's where I met Annette. So that's where we met. Mm -hmm. And I showed up there. I have a a very, very different path to short-term rentals and Airbnb from Sarah, but similar in the fact that I have had previous careers and it was time to move on from those. Again, since it is law chat, we're going to bring up all the law stuff. My Career before, I had a lovely attorney. I had equity in that business. So not only did I have a partnership agreement, I also had a very well-written employee agreement that when I, um, I like to say I got quit because it was imperative for me, for them to let me go for that employment agreement to kick in. I had a really nice severance. I had a long runway to decide what was next for me. Mm -hmm. And I will say at that point in time, I was in the apparel business. A lot of it was online direct to consumer. And I'd been going to an office. I mean, and where, you know, like not only an office, but warehouse, like lots of people, we had retail stores. So like, if I wasn't there on premises, like I wasn't working, you know, there was, yeah. there was the clothing there, there was the people there, there was the, the merchandise, the everything, all the packaging. So it wasn't, I was beholden to this one place. And so when I left there, I was like, wait a second, I, I don't want to have to go to work every day anymore. You know, I had equity, but I was still working for someone. And I was like, I'm going to fight tooth and nail to figure out how I don't have to go to an office every day and how I can create something on my own. And I was lucky to have some of that runway and also started just thinking of anything and everything. Like, what do I want to do? The shared economy, since I had this runway, was like so interesting to me. I didn't want to Uber. I love Uber. I use it all the time. But I was like, oh, this Airbnb, would this be an option but I'm like, we live in Columbus, Ohio. Who comes to Columbus, Ohio? <laughs> I was fortunate enough 
I did not own any property at that time, but I was friends. Um, I had a really great relationship with a real estate developer who I had been meeting with during this downtime, kind of chit-chatting about things and telling him he should do short-term rentals in some of his properties because he had he had a, a decent portfolio, you know, a thousand plus units. He could have, he had a few to spare, but he was like, no, no way. My team is focused. I'm not going to do that. And then I was like, oh, that's a bummer. And then I was like, wait a second, why don't we make money together? Because again, I kind of had a little bit of that leeway where I wasn't, the pressure wasn't on to mm -hmm. make a ton of money. So I I could figure things out. And so he was right. like, if you want to do it. So I was like, all right, let's do it. Dove right in. Kind of similarly to Sarah, like I have a background in hospitality. Like I've worked in restaurants. I've worked at resorts. I love hotels. Sarah said, loves houses. I love hotels. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking this is how I could marry both of those. And so I just dove right in. We started with one and did some profit sharing and that went really well. Then another one and then another one and then my personal space. And so I was like, okay, people actually come to Columbus, Ohio in droves, <laughs> especially if you have a very well-designed space. It's in an area that is desirable and obviously you take care of the guest. So that was my background starting in Airbnb. But what I noticed is as I was on this journey to figure out what that next thing was for me, I was dabbling in a bunch of other things. I went to a marketing conference and one of our tasks there was like, what's the number one thing that your friend's family, like, what does everybody ask you about? And I was like, freaking everybody asked me about Airbnb. I thought about all these other things I have expertise in. I was like, nobody wants to know about that stuff. They all want to know about short-term rental and Airbnb. And then it, the light bulb went off. Why don't I figure out how to, instead of going coffee date, coffee date, coffee date, bottle this up and the thought of the podcast and then education. But then I don't like to do things solo. I like a team. And luckily, I'm not going to lie. I kind of um, stalked Sarah for <laughs> someone else's recommendation on social media. She has a wonderful social media following her and her husband. And so I might have sat down right next to her at that city council meeting <laughs> on purpose. So that's kind of how that, you know, started us singularly and then coming together. But I want to make one mention that that first relationship that I had with that developer, I didn't have anything on paper. <laughs> um, <laughs> so luckily he is an amazing person and we a handshake for us was right. good but as the relationship went on and other people saw how successful we were it, it you know that was not the smartest move on my yeah. part so um yeah. just want to put that out there for everybody because a lot of people do get in these short term rental relationships whether they're helping someone or co-hosting or designing or taking photos let's get it on paper ahead of time yeah. so that that's yeah. a lot of our mission now Sarah myself gosh Oh my gosh, that is like a great story, number one. And then number two, it just shows how one step led to the other and almost, it almost like you were meant to be together also, by the way. And I mean, it's, it's incredible. And quite frankly, Sarah, the way you even express and talk about the rental space, it just seems like, oh, I just need to get on this, even though I'm really behind by 10 years, probably. But, you know, <laughs> There's no behind. There is There's no behind. And hey, there is always room for an amazing host. There will never not be room. There will never not be room in any industry for someone to be the best. So that's my encouragement for everyone listening. Like if you know you're going to be amazing at it, there will always be room for you, whatever that might be. You're that never is behind. That's so true. And I think there's always space because there's always people traveling. I mean, mm -hmm. you're right. When I think of Columbus, Ohio, I'm not thinking, oh, yeah, that's going to be my next holiday, right? No, like, I'm not thinking that. I don't know actually how many people think that, but, you know, there's people coming in for work. There's people that's coming right. in even wanting to just stay like nearby holidays, Family. So, weddings, yeah, so reunions. many things are going on that we don't think about. I mean, Sarah and I can attest to this, that some of the best markets in the country are not vacation rental markets. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously the occupancy and the amount of people that are going there, if you look at just those numbers, but if you look at the lot of smaller towns, because the cost of the real estate itself is so much lower, there is an opportunity for you to make a lot of money. So I don't want anyone listening to count themselves out because they're in a second tier, third tier, fourth tier. I mean, Someone always has a hometown. Someone always has a relative in a town. True. Most towns have hospitals. Most towns have churches that have weddings, that have birthdays and anniversaries and festivals. I mean, there are so many random festivals across the U.S. and conventions. So if you have a convention center, if you have a festival, if you have 
any churches, if you have any, you know, let's say old folks home, because people are coming to visit them, there are reasons people are coming to your town. So um, yeah, don't count yourself out. And I absolutely love that you said that because it really opens the mindset, right? We're always thinking Airbnb equals vacation. A lot of us think that way because Mm -hmm. quite frankly, that's when we're looking for an Airbnb or if we're going for a wedding, maybe. But I think you're right. And from the point of view of a owner of the business person, you're right. There's so many opportunities for someone to come and stay at your Airbnb. And I, I do want to talk a little bit more about that though. So I feel like when I read about you and I did research about you, you don't just do Airbnb. You're like next level Airbnb. (laughs) I think before we got on the call also, I told you, you know, there's Airbnbs, you go there and you're just like, this is so amazing. Like, wow. I feel like I would always, there's some that I want to go back to because they're that awesome. And then you go to some and you're just like, what did I read? And what did this person perceive their place to be like? And what just happened in the whole translation? Because you're just like, what? And then that makes me want to run away from Airbnbs at that point. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, I know that you're like, I'm done with the coffee dates. Let's have a more organized way of explaining things to everybody and sharing our knowledge. What are some things that you know, if someone was to unpack the Airbnb world, what are some top tips that you could be giving out to those that want to actually get into this industry? I mean, you've already started saying like from the mindset, get all of that out there. There's so many things that people can be using your home for or wanting to stay there. But what are some other tangible tips that you could be giving? I'll let Annette Annette speak on getting involved from like the host side, but I do really quick want to comment on your you don't know what you're getting side as a guest, because for us, we're not going to have a great business if we don't have guests who trust the yeah. short-term rental industry. So if you're listening and you haven't yet tried the Airbnb platform, or now you can you can book homes on booking.com, you can book them on VRBO. There's a whole other slew of online travel agencies where you can book houses yeah. is to like Annette said before he's hit the record button is to look at the reviews of the guests who stayed and like, not just the first three, because I'm surprised at how some guests really don't, they they just want like a place to lay their head. But if you like, I would like, I think a safe bet is like if the last two months, everyone's been like, this place is great. Then I think you can trust that Mm -hmm. your expectations are going to meet those of of the photos that you see on the online listing. If you see a few in there, like the place was dirty, blah, 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 it probably was. (laughs) So reading the reviews, and also you can kind of just tell by the interaction you get from the host, um, if it feels very automated and very cold, how attentive are they to their property, right? Because at the crux of it, we're we're hospitality. So look Mm -hmm. at those reviews, communicate with the host. But Annette, how can people get involved? I think the first thing is obviously looking at the space that they have, whatever that may be. Is it your primary residence? Do you have a mother-in-law suite? Do you have a basement with a door? Do you have a garage with, you know, an ADU on top of it? Do you have some sort of like Airstream or an RV? Do you have land? We have so many people that have container homes, that have A-frames, that have a caboose. Like, don't count yourself out. Just get your mind thinking. But the thing I like to tell everyone is think about where you like to stay. Think about hotel brands. There's a ton of them out there all the way from, you know, let's say it's Holiday Inn Express to, you know, the Ritz Carlton. Think about where you would like to stay and what type of place that you would like to provide for your guest. Because here's the deal. If you won't stay in your own place, why do you expect people to spend their hard earned money? to stay in your place. And Sarah's heard me say this many a times to people that want to get into short-term rentals and they tell me the location of their house and what they want to provide and their budget. And I say, would you ever stay there? Would you ever have your wife and kids stay there without you? Would you invite your best friend from college to stay there? Your family? And they say, no, then I say, this is not the space for you. So Mm -hmm. I think you need to create a space that you would be willing to spend your hard-earned money on and also tell all of your friends and family about. And like your space would be so amazing. You're actually mad it's booked all the time because you can't ever get to enjoy it. That's like knowing that you have created something amazing when you're jealous of your guests staying in the space that you've created for them. And gone are the days where guests expect, oh, a futon and like your extra sheets from grandma's mm-hmm. house, right? This is 2023. I mean, 
like my first guest was like, I think it was like 2010 or 11, something like that. But that's, you know, that's 10 plus years. The guest has gotten very savvy, especially yeah. if you're listening right now and you're like, yeah, I now expect a welcome gift and really fast Wi-Fi and Netflix <laughs> to already be logged in. Like, the expectations have changed a lot. Yeah, We're still in our infancy in terms of it being this. That's another comment I can make is this isn't new, right? Vacation rental companies have been around yeah. for hundreds of years. B&Bs have been around for a long time. So Airbnb <laughs> just made it so that the everyday person can become a hotelier, right? Like if the everyday yeah. person can become a hospitality business owner. And that's both scary and exciting because we have people who don't. And this is another thing that Annette and I are very passionate about. If you're thinking about getting into this game, it's not just clean sheets and well-decorated. I mean, those are also given, but safety is huge. I mean, there's a lot of liability in welcoming people into your home and a lot of people don't read, like if you have to get licensed, they'll skip over the fact that you're supposed to read all of your city code and understand it and make sure you're abiding by it mm-hmm. or think about the terrible stuff that can and and does happen in these short-term rentals and that it's not enough for you to say, I didn't know. It's your job to know and you will be held accountable if it happens. And so, I mean, this stuff keeps me up at night and that, and that knows I tell her all the time. I'm like, you know, whatever that is, like, because we also manage for other people. And so- just to know that too, that you have a, you're taking on a big responsibility getting into this industry. It's very lucrative. It's super fun, but it's also a big responsibility. And I think too, I, I want to let all the listeners know it is something that, you know, I encourage if you have, you know, if you're excited about it and it's something you think you want to try, definitely try it. But in order to be successful at it and to really, you know, reap the financial rewards. It needs to be a long game. It isn't, I mean, you could do the, Hey, when we go on vacation, we rent it out, but it is so much work to prep your home Mm -hmm. for a guest. I don't know how that would be in any way, shape or form, something you'd want to do before you go on vacation. People do, but (laughs) they do, but I would just be prepared that, you know, the, the amount of work that it takes to prep your personal residence for that, for maybe it's a weekend or a week, or maybe there is a large event. I would just really do the numbers on how much, you know, that financial reward is going to be, because I will tell you that it's the compound effect over time. The more reviews that you can get, the more that you learn, the higher your nightly rate can be. And then you can really start to financially separate yourself from hopefully the other host in your area. And then You also, like if it was a long-term rental to a short-term rental, I think you've got to give it enough time to really reap the rewards. Yeah. I love every single thing that you have said. And I I feel like the one thing that keeps popping up over and over again is hospitality. It's also the long-term game. It's the hospitality. You're in the business of hospitality and not just, oh, I have a space. Maybe I can rent it out. There's so much more that goes into it. And I know you talked a little bit more about the legal stuff before, but the legal stuff is not just the contracts, like you were saying, uh, you know, you need to have that if you're working with somebody for whatever capacity, but even, you know, licenses, permits that you also need and insurance and also safeguarding as much as you can and putting in all their, you know, whatever, like an alarm system or just something where people can't just walk in anytime. Mm-hmm. I think we'll just mention it because again, Sarah and I do want to educate as much as possible. There are a lot of people out there. There's something called air cover marketing tool that Airbnb uses that it's a million dollars of, and I think they increased it actually of air cover, which they've been really wise and not calling it insurance, but everyone Most else thinks, hosts it's thinks it's insurance. It is not insurance. So That is a tip right now. If you are going to short-term rent your home, you need to be very, very transparent with the insurer of your home that you are doing that because Mm -hmm. a lot of them, if it's your primary residence, they will say, you know, they'll just have a lot of questions about that. If it is something that you've bought as an investment property, you know, that's something, an easier, like not an easier conversation, but that full time you're going to be renting it out uh, and short-term renting it out. So please talk to your insurance provider. There are plenty of wonderful short-term rental insurances out there. I don't want to make it seem like it's not easy to find a provider, but you just, you don't want to be caught with not having short-term rental specific insurance. And some of the differences there are loss of income, if, if something were to happen to your property and you can't have those reservations coming in. So loss of income, you know, want to be on the lookout if you were ever to get bed bugs. There's there's different things for a short-term rental than your primary residence or even a long-term renter. So that's something for anyone to keep in mind if they're going to get involved. Oh my gosh. So many issues that you've just brought up. Bed bugs. Like I didn't even think about 
it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that can happen long term. It can yeah. happen in your personal yeah. home. Right? You get the airport, you sit in the wrong seat. But it's just little stuff as a homeowner. You, that's yeah. not normally the stuff that you're thinking of or loss of income, you know, personally. Or you might think of it personally if you, you know. But bigger than that, if your insurer doesn't know that you're renting on a short term basis and the neighbor's dog yeah. bites your guest and they sue you and your yep. insurer is like, I don't know, you're renting it to short term mm-hmm. guests. Like we're, he- we we're cover, out of here. We cover long term. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then air cover is not going to help you. I promise you that. Yeah. I think the point that you've made about it being your home, your residence versus something that's intended for, you know, business at the end of the day, I think you're right because the transparency is so different. The person that's insuring you also, the company knows the purpose of why you have this and the insurance options also kind of change at that point as well. Mm -hmm. And loss of income is huge in any business. You should have that, whether you are, you know, renting out short-term rentals or in, you know, a multi-million dollar company as well. And the reason is it's not just also it's the, there's this insurance as well out there for the primary, basically the principal person who's heading your business. And so Mm -hmm. there's insurance even covering that person in case something were to happen and they were gone, what's going to happen and the money and the loss of income at that point. So, Mm -hmm. right. Like a key man insurance. Is that right? Yes. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) Yep. Got it. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yes, yes, exactly. Tell me, how do you- Why does it have to be key man? Isn't that outdated? Key lady. Key person. They key need to person. Let's rename it right key now. Person. Key person insurance. We renamed it. Yeah, but I do think it's called key person. I've seen key person okay, actually okay. in a okay, lot of good. Yeah. Maybe I need to change my mindset then. All right, I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sometimes you'll be very surprised. I mean, right now we're talking about 2023 and then aside from everything that we're talking about, the world is still, you're like, why is this happening in other parts of the world? There's a lot going on yeah, in many parts is. of the world right now, but that's totally sidetracking. So you've given some amazing advice on, you know, when you're first starting and not be afraid of location and kind of look at all the other opportunities that are available and tap into that as well. And how do you become that five-star Airbnb? Like, what do we have to do to become that? And I know hospitality is huge and I love that you focus on that because it is a business at the end of the day. But what do you do to get that five star? I'm going to let Sarah take this. But the first thing I also want to say is you can have a container home. You can have an off-grid cabin and you can have a 10 bedroom right on the beach oceanfront property and you can still be an amazing host. So the property type does not dictate that. So I'll let Sarah lean in on the host and how you become an amazing host. But I also want everyone to know that it doesn't like the actual experience, the actual walls don't have to dictate the, how the host offers up that hospitality. I mean, and what that is and why that is, is because you've set expectations and they are right. Like under promise a little bit. And then, so you can like really over deliver when they show up. We, I mean, we get professional photos of our properties, all of them. And sometimes people will say in our reviews, like it's even better than the listing or like the photos re- don't do it justice. And it's like, do I need a new photographer? But you know, <laughs> but I think that's because other hosts, they've you, been duped. They've been duped before. Like, like you mentioned before we mm-hmm. pressed record. So really being, I mean, I'm not telling you to talk down your property, but to be honest, like for example, I've got a property that mm-hmm. I've not renovated. I don't think it's been renovated since like the maybe mid eighties. Right. But I'm very honest about that. The decor is new. The bed is incredibly comfortable. The couch is awesome. All the other like things that you would expect, you know, smart TVs, everything in the kitchen that you could possibly need. And if something's missing, I mention it like we are not your host here. If you're looking for, you know, cable or king size bed or you know, the home has not been renovated since, since the eighties. So we try to be very, very, for every two awesome things, we put something that would not match you with that property if that's not what you're looking for. So being transparent, but technically on the Airbnb app specifically, if you're talking about super host status, canceling, you cannot cancel on the guest. It's a big, big no, no to Mm -hmm. have your calendar say that you can accommodate someone and then you change your mind. Mm -hmm. There are some instances where Airbnb will allow this. If you feel that a guest has booked your spot and that they're going to break your rules because of some red flags, Airbnb will usually side on with you. But it's not easy because, again, just like us, the guest is the Airbnb customer too. They need our houses, but we need the guest to be happy. So canceling is also a really big no-no. There's location has to be, again, expectations have to be set, accuracy, check-in, cleanliness, 
and value safety and safety. Yeah. Safety is not a rating on there. Unfortunately. Oh yeah. We're, but we're making that our own, yeah. but, but, but yes, Man, but it being should be, safe, though. safety it should, should be. be. Yeah. yeah. And Sarah, I, I wish I could, I don't know her exact quote on this, but she has something that's really great is the way to just be an amazing host too, is anticipate the guest needs. Like if someone's going to reach mm-hmm. for something at your home, like if they're going to reach on the side of their bed to turn on a light or for a phone charger, you have it there. If they're in the bathroom and they're going to reach for hand soap or body soap or shampoo or conditioner, have it there. If they're going to hang their towel up, like wherever you anticipate their needs, if you can anticipate their needs in the space, you're going to knock it out of the park. Gosh, I love that. And that also kind of reminds me of Disney because Disney is one of the best service industries out there. And it's kind of the same concept though, that you anticipate the needs and the pain points and you solve it even before it becomes a problem or a pain point. And truly you walk in there and you're like, wow, you already read my mind even before I started doing this. And that's, that's such an amazing feeling to walk away from. And the, after the, like anticipate their needs, there's also a surprise and delight. And again, these do not have to be expensive things. It can mm-hmm. be, oh my gosh, they have earplugs in case it gets louder. I can't sleep. They left a bag of popcorn because we checked in late. You know, there are a lot of small little things that you can do. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, they actually have streaming services for us. We don't have to type in our long username and password. So there's little inexpensive, sometimes free things that you can do to surprise and delight that guest, even maybe leave them a card with their name on it. So a lot of small little details like that to surprise and delight them throughout their stay to make it feel like it's for them. Because I feel like that concept of surprise and delight though can apply to every business, every single business. It is such a great way of even coining that surprise and delight. How do you do that in law? I want to (laughs) know. I think it's just giving some extra. <laughs> well, you know, I am not your typical lawyer, so okay. I am. How also would you not, surprise and delight us? I'm also not doing billable hours, so I can absolutely surprise. Oh, that's surprise and delight. That's delightful. I'm here. <laughs> I, I, I mean, love honestly, our attorney, like with sometimes, <laughs> yeah, like with my clients, I'll kind of if they're like you know post helping them, but I'm still kind of working with them. But traditionally, we're like kind of done with whatever the original work was, but I'm still there for them. And, you know, sometimes they're like, how do we do this? I'll just send them like a template for them to use, non- or, you know, just something. Right. And it could be that, or it could just be a thank you gift or whatever. And just small things like that, where you don't really expect a lawyer to do it, but then I do it just because I would want my lawyer to do it. For me. Yeah. Right. So. That's the thing too, you know, do unto <laughs> others or what, yeah. what do you want when you stay anywhere? So another tip we give newbies is to not only stay in your own space and really stay there, right? Like really spend the night. I know it's like, well, I got to clean it, but it's worth it. Yeah. Really stay there. What annoys you? How's the water pressure? Is there a hook for your towel, the way you shower and the way you would move in the bathroom? And then you have your truth telling friends stay there. You know, that friend who like yeah. is not afraid. The one that will tell the restaurant, like, this is not what I want when it's like exactly what they ordered. <laughs> <laughs> that friend is very valuable before you have paying guests who are going to review you. Because I will tell you this. While, you know, that's a whole other probably podcast episode, while you don't necessarily have to just rely on Airbnb for bookings, you don't have to, that's a misconception, but it is the biggest lead generator these days because they put millions of dollars in their marketing. Mm -hmm. But that being said, if you want to do well in Airbnb, yes, you have to not cancel and be clean and be accurate and all those things, but you, yeah, you have to get five-star reviews, right? So you have to to hit all those, Mm -hmm. those points because those reviews do help you in the search algorithm of airbnb.com. Yeah. So if you are negatively reviewed, it's not just a, bo- a hit to your ego. You are going to go down in the rankings. They're not going to show you on page you. 12. Mm-hmm. You know, you won't show up on the map. It's a very, yeah. it's a very easy way for Airbnb to determine who's doing a good job or not. And so they're like, if you're getting those five-star reviews, they're going to boost you to the top of the algorithm. If you're not, you're going to go down low. So it is very, very, very important. So luckily it's a simple algorithm but it may not be as simple to achieve it. How do you get those reviews though? Not everybody leaves a review. Is there an incentive mm-hmm. you can provide your guests you to ask for it? Yeah, you got to ask for it because Airbnb, I, I, I don't know if everyone understands as much, like they're, they're pretty aggressive at getting the review too. So you have to, you have to be gentle. Like the host, you have to understand Airbnb is also asking for it the same mm-hmm. way that you are asking for it. And by the way, you have to make sure that you gave them a five-star experience. (laughs) So that's one thing that you obviously like know ahead of time, but 
setting them up, knowing how important the reviews are to you. So if you can set the stage ahead of time, right after they check in, Sarah, why don't you tell them what the message is like um, the right after check-in so we can yeah. kind of start to tee them up. You need to tee them up that that's an important part of your business. Yeah. If they're staying more than one night, the night after they check in that morning, we invite them to let us know if there's any way we could level up their stay anymore. Is anything not working? Don't hesitate to let us know. You know, it excites us to be able to meet you where you're at and make your stay really exceptional. And in return, at the end of your stay, we'd love to earn a five-star review from you. And then before they check out to remind them too. So here's your checkout. If we can make it any easier for you, let us know. And again, you know, our family would really appreciate honest um, feedback at that five-star review if you and that for us. Sarah and I have a membership and we have tons of members that, man, they have each have their innovative, creative way to get these reviews. Some people leave magnets and signage and that, you know, about the five-star reviews and, and they kind of create their own lingo around it. So it is about getting creative too, in your space and knowing who your guest is and how you can acquire those. But yeah, that you have to work, you have to work for them. You can't just let it, let it ride right. and, and hope because when people, I will be honest in this, like when people shut the door and they leave your house, they're done. They're right. over next. You yeah. know, like we're all busy. They're they're either wrapping up their vacation or they're done with work for the week and they're going home to their family or, you know, whatever that was. So for them to leave a review, it is extra quote unquote work for them. Yeah. So you have to, and you know, let them know how important it is to you. Right. Right. And I kind of want to touch on what you had said earlier about Airbnb not being the only platform. And I think it's really important. It's kind of like, and I'm not to doing a whole comparison because it's not, but like social media, it cannot be your only platform. Instagram cannot be your only platform. Mm-hmm. Facebook cannot be your, your only platform. You need to have your own platform where you're funneling out to other platforms like a website or something. So that way, ultimately, it's still yours. Before, mm-hmm. you know, like the bread and breakfast and all of like the hotels, they have their own platforms. They're just offering better prices through Expedia or through something else. Meanwhile, this is a whole different concept because these are homes are traditionally first made for Airbnb. And so when you're talking to your uh, clients or people that you're giving your consultations to, what do you suggest to them with regards to their property and using a third party to sell their property? essentially. It's a big job because as you said, everyone calls them, it's like Kleenex. They call them Airbnbs, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're already giving all ownership to that brand. In some cases, rightfully so, they did a really great job in 2008 and they created this place for us to, again, really use our properties in ingenious ways. But prior to 2008, if you wanted to stay at a private home in Myrtle Beach, you would go to, you know, I don't know, MyrtleBeachBeachHouses.com. Like, right. It's it's not in the same breath as it not being anything new. It, it is new. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we have to kind of like remind people like it's not out of this world to have, you know, Sarah's Houses.com, your own place on the web to accept reservations. Because if you build your business on borrowed land, you have to play by your landlord's rules, right? Or Airbnb's rules. And that's okay once in a while to get those leads. But if you really want a business, if you want to not have to always rely on whatever the Airbnb decides to do or decide what's important to them, you have to take baby steps. It doesn't have to be this like giant, only start there first and then introduce Airbnb. It's cool to start an Airbnb. We're not saying that. That, yeah, that's it's something you have to take in consideration. There's little things that you can do in the beginning of just, again, liking it to Instagram or TikTok or anything like that is obtaining your guest email address. How can you, you know, correspond with them after the reservation has completed? Mm-hmm. So collecting email addresses of your guests and having some digital real estate, you know, that's inexpensive to purchase online. And it can even you know, go back to the OTA or Airbnb or Verbo, but, you know, purchasing some digital real estate, maybe having a landing page there and getting those email addresses and just starting because everyone has a network too. I'm sure you have friends or family or somebody in the town where you have the property that might want to have a direct booking. So definitely getting that started, getting that started ahead of time. And, you know, it's great to start like having guests on the OTA first because the OTA vets them, the OTA gets the money. But once they're an amazing guest and they've left and your space is maybe, you know, doesn't even look like anybody stayed, you know, you can have them, you can 
reach out to them and have them come back and stay with you and book directly. So I think baby steps for sure. Um, and just making sure that you're, you're collecting some of that guest information so you can have it to reach back out. Any other business, when Mm -hmm. you go to a retail store, they ask you for your, can I have your phone number so I can send you special Mm -hmm. offers? Can I have your email address, right? It's not uncommon to sit down at a coffee shop. And when you want their Wi-Fi, them to ask you for your name and email to access the Wi-Fi. There is technology now for short-term rentals to do that. So there's down to just having a piece of paper on your dining room table when they arrive and just saying, if you'd like us to invite you back at a better rate, leave your email address here. I mean, as simple as that too. Oh, I love that. That is so cool. What is OT? I'm sorry. We're trying that. That's why I like kind of acronymed and then use the actual, it's online travel agency. So like that would be an Airbnb, a okay. Verbo, Expedia.com. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Good. So it's just I mean, basically the blanket. Either. It's the blanket term for all of the all other of booking agencies. Yeah. yeah. It's basically all of them cumulatively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wonderful. My goodness, you have packed us with so much information. And quite frankly, just learning from you has motivated me personally as well. Yeah. And I think it's motivating, just you're very inspiring and just so calm about it too. It just seems very easy, but I know it's not. And so, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not easy. Fun. Right? Like there's so much and fun. Yeah, it is fun. Like, and obviously we wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. And nothing worth it is easy. No, you know, like you, it's, that's part of the fun. No, so. but it's, you know, it, it's the aspect of really loving on a space and allowing others to share that love. And I just kind of love that. I think it's so yes. nice mm-hmm. that the energies that you're putting into the space that you're allowing others to be in, is just filled with so much intention. And of course, hospitality is the core center of it all. So that truly is really cool. You know, I know you probably faced many challenges also, coming to the point that you're here today, when you face those challenges, what is something that holds you steady and keeps you like anchored? I'll go first, not to be whatever, <laughs> but a big reason Annette <laughs> mentioned she doesn't like to work alone and, and I don't either. Like I, it's funny cause I'm incredibly independent and I like to make my own decisions and I, and I very much, I have a lot of self-confidence in my decision-making, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's so good to do with someone else who's really smart and I respect. So for me, it's having a business partner mm-hmm. to either talk me out of being crazy lady or remind me that we do have what it takes, right? So just someone in your life who believes in what you're doing or what you want to do, because you are the average of the five people you hang around with yeah. or, you know, give or take. Yeah. And so surrounding yourself around people who can really see what you want to do and just giving you that space to experiment and fail and get back up and all that kind of good stuff. And I think just, this is the, an excellent piggyback off of what Sarah just said is like quitting won't get you there any faster. So if something becomes hard, it's like, well, if we quit this, then you just start at the beginning of something else, like that's not going to get us to our goals any faster. So just digging in. So just remembering that quitting is, won't get you there any faster. Oh gosh. So much. And one rapid fire question, just basic. What are you one, watching? That's not rapid fire. That's only one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> what is, uh, what are you watching on Netflix these days? Speaking of Netflix and having it available. Netflix. Okay. I was like Netflix, not, oh. not, not voodoo. Cause I'm really, I'm, I'm oh, into reality TV. Too. What are you watching on streaming? I, I just yes, stream, yeah. went through the entire <laughs> catalog of Vanderpump Rules <laughs> because hospitality <laughs> drama is like she loves Lisa Vanderpump. I she is like, like, yeah, got it going on. <laughs> if anyone listening can get me to like you know one degree of Lisa Vanderpump here for it, but that's oh, what I've been gosh, watching. I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna say two because they were both fascinating. I just watched Madoff. And I cannot believe I'm like, if this guy can, now if from this, this guy can run this Ponzi scheme <laughs> at billions of dollars, I can run an amazing, like up, like above board business. And then I also, it was the newest, it's called um, Julia and it's with Julia child. And oh. um, it was so wait, that's her name, right? The chef. Mm-hmm. She like, I freaking loved it. Please everybody listening, watch it because she created her own just her own path. And if you watch it, I don't want to, I don't want to spoiler alert, but like that show was not given to her. She worked really hard for it. And she is not, I mean, if everyone remembers her voice and her stature, she did not have the things that were quote unquote for TV. And that was so inspirational. Um, Super inspirational. 
And you're talking about a series. Where is that? What is that? It was, it was on, I think, HBO Max. Okay. Like really well. Like, I unbelievable. And I loved it because she's a pioneer, a female yeah. pioneer. And it's just, I want to look at every food tuber and say, she's the reason you guys have yeah. you know, any success now. It is. She was really a trailblazer. Goodness. Uh, really, really a trailblazer. The movie that came out many years ago was fantastic too. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. But I don't think yeah. it kind of, it didn't, it didn't highlight that aspect. So I'm going to look into it. Yeah. Cause this, that aspect really highlighted her writing of the book. This one highlights her getting her um, television show on public television. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much for sharing all of your wisdom. It was truly such a delight to hang out with you and chat with you Mm -hmm. and learn from you. So thank you so much. Yeah. Can we, can we let your listeners know if you enjoyed the show? Absolutely. We have have over 200 episodes of our own (laughs) on our show called Thanks for Visiting. If if this is the type of medium that you like to listen to, we have a podcast called Thanks for Visiting. Like I said, 200 episodes there. We're also on YouTube. Thanks for visiting. And if you want to find out more about running an amazing short-term rental, we have a workshop that you can take. And we'll that's at thanksforvisiting.me forward slash workshop. And we'll make sure that you can provide that in the show notes because we want to up-level what it means to be a host. So if anyone's interested, please look at those resources. Awesome. And then you beat me to it. I was going to ask you. How uh, okay. You I was like making how sure. I was like, is she going to hang you? up and not ask us these things? We got to make no, sure. No, no, no. Of course I do. <laughs> and everything's going to be in the show notes anyways, all your contacts, your links and everything. Perfect. And if you haven't shared anything with me yet, please send it over and then I can put it into the show notes. So yes, but awesome. definitely follow them. Definitely connect with them. I think, and I I'm on your newsletter and I just, I read it and there's a lot of cool stuff coming out of you. So this is, thank you very much. Subscribe. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of law chat. I hope this was super beneficial to you. I really enjoyed sharing this information with you today. And I have to ask you for a favor. Like I did in the beginning, I'm going to ask you again, please share this with your community, whether it's a friend, family, or another colleague, or someone else on your Facebook or Instagram or other social media spot, share this, subscribe and stay tuned for other episodes coming in. So you are always up to date, but then also take another moment and share this episode with your community. Because when you share it with everybody else, not only are they benefiting, but also the information that I'm sharing is reaching out to more people because at the end of the day, we want to rise together with our community. And I can only do that with your help. Now, I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful that you tuned in and I want to hear from you as well. So shoot me a DM on Instagram at GBP Law or at Law Chat with Gerja. I would love to hear from you. I would love to also hear what other episodes that you would like to hear about, topics that you want to hear about, and also just connect with you. And thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, cheers. Mm -hmm.